As Afro-descended people, it's important to learn from the past so that we can help shape our future. Some African countries are seemingly taking action on those lessons learned. The world is changing rapidly. The proliferation of AI and the digital landscape is changing how people interact with the world around them. Despite the many benefits of AI and the digital landscape, there is some cause for concern. A friend of mine who has been in a tech space for years has openly discussed the potential threat of this rising digital revolution, especially as it concerns the African continent. What up African world, it's Home Team here and welcome back to another video of African history, culture, and worldview. By supporting this channel on Patreon, you're helping in the creation of these videos and contributing to this content. The link to Patreon is in the description box below. Also, stay tuned with a word from our sponsors. Hello, my name is Howard Dorsey. I'm 54 years old. I'm here to talk about my uh, experience with herbal results. Um, I was getting sick, so I, I went to the doctor and they told me that um, my blood pressure was high my cholesterol was borderline or high so I was very sick you know I thought I was sometimes I thought I was dying at, at some point and uh, I ordered a bottle of olive leaf extract this is this is how the bottle comes in and within the first probably week and a half two weeks I checked my blood pressure and it was back down to normal it was like 120 over 80 and my cholesterol went down to uh, 125 you know, I definitely believe that olive leaf extract from Herbal Results saved my life. And, I, and that's real. I mean, I, 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 and I recommend it to everyone in my family, my friends, and we've seen a lot of results in that, in that manner as well. Purchase now at HerbalResults.net. To begin, this video is opinion based, so please take it with a grain of salt. The founder of a digital platform called OBT Social, one of the sponsors of this channel, has recently discussed his concern for what we'll call the second Berlin conference. He's been in the tech space for years and has ready insight into the ins and outs of the industry, so I thought it would be beneficial to share his thoughts on what he believes may be a potential threat to the African continent. I'm sure many of you have seen the exponential growth of technology and the potential of the digital world. Some may even consider this moment in time a technological revolution, similar if not greater than the industrial revolution. So what was his video about and why the comparison to the Berlin Conference? First, let's understand what the Berlin Conference was. It was an international meeting held from November 15th, 1884 to February 26th, 1885 that effectively divided vast amounts of African territory among major European powers. In essence, Europe wanted to control Africa's resources and extract wealth. The idea here, presented by Michael Thompson of OBT Social, is that companies will be vying to have access to Africa's resources in a different way. This second Berlin conference will involve powerful companies targeting Africa with the intent to build their technological infrastructure. On the surface, this sounds incredibly charitable, but according to Michael, it's a potential Trojan horse. The problem arises with the question of ownership. Who owns and controls the infrastructure? Because whoever owns it wields the power and influence. Theoretically, this gift can turn into a new form of enslavement, digital enslavement, if you will. Understandably, this may sound like fear-mongering for some, but we've seen how European powers preserved its influence and control through transformation over the centuries, neo-colonialism being a prime example. Countries like Rwanda are actively investing in technology. Paula Ngabiri, Rwanda's Minister of Information and Communication Technology, wants to ensure Rwanda is not left behind in the coming digital revolution. The time has come for Africa to put itself at the very center of a new technological revolution. Our continent has a unique competitive advantage 
that stems from an undeniably entrepreneurial spirit that is built into our young generations. That is an ability to innovate out of necessity. Though I believe this is a step in the right direction for Rwanda, it's important that the network infrastructure is owned and controlled by Rwanda. If this isn't the case, it may have pernicious consequences in the future. The idea of digital enslavement presented to us by Michael is a critical concept for the African continent. I think one of the most salient aspects of his cautious outlook is the argument about what is the most valuable resource. What does this industry want from Africa? From his perspective, the traditional valuable resources like, say, oil are important. However, in our modern digitized world, he believes that these companies will consider the most valuable resource to be data. And the companies that may be allowed to build the infrastructure in certain African countries will own the data because everything will go through their network. I thought his analysis was important to consider. As we face new challenges in the diaspora, it's important that our conversations change as well. It's not often I hear someone proclaim that data will be the most valuable resource. As we become more reliant on technology as humans, owners of said technology will become increasingly powerful. I think conversations like these in our community can help us mitigate unforeseen threats to sovereignty in the future. I'm really curious what you guys think about his argument. If you can provide some additional insight, that is certainly welcome as well. There are African countries that seem committed to sovereignty in all areas of human activity, but others not so much. For those African nations who are more relaxed in their approach, do you think the concept of, say, digital enslavement can be a legitimate threat in their future? In other words, will the Western or perhaps Asian nations that are able to design and build the network infrastructure in certain African countries eventually own those countries? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Well, I'm all out, guys. If you like these videos and want to help in its continued production, consider supporting the home team on Patreon.com. The link is in the description box below. Know thyself. Remember your ancestors. Peace.